Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Thaddeus on the because today is the 9th of June, 2020. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this um, Tuesday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, guys, so now then, uh, just before we jump in into the charts, as always, guys, a quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on GFDBank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Um, so, quick update on what's happening here globally. As you can see, yes, we have managed to surpass the um, the <clears throat> uh, 7 million mark. Um, and the most important is that the U.S. is coming closer to the 2 million figure. So, um, so yeah, quite a bad situation in there. Um, however, let's have a look at quickly at the daily cases so we can see that, yes, the numbers have uh, are slowly falling. But... Um, as I've mentioned before, guys, looking at this picture here, um, basically we can uh, maybe even try to apply technical analysis even on this chart because for now uh, it was before it was moving in a range here. Um, but uh, moving sideways and then it started climbing higher um, and we can say that for, for now it's within a rising channel so unfortunately of course uh, because again let's see of course how all this is going to play out but um, uh, given the the tendency um, then yes I mean it, it is kind of moving us uh, a little bit um, up and down up and down so but for now it's moving within a with a rising uh with an with an uptrend let's put it this way so yeah uh let's hopefully let's see if the trend can be broken but uh, for now that's the case um <clears throat> so now then uh jumping into a few charts very quickly so the first one i want to touch on here is the german dax and uh looking at this picture you can see that yes the index um, the index is trying to climb higher. Um, yesterday, uh, it closed slightly in the red. Um, and uh, yep, uh, although we can see that the, the candle here is the daily candle is positive, but because it was it opened with a gap here, so it would still close and slightly in the red. Um, and uh, well, I mean, for now, looking at this picture, we can see that this is the key area that I was talking about, the uh, 12,887 zone. In my previous videos uh, last week, I, I spoke about this the this area you can see that the index managed to reach that area uh, on Friday almost managed to reach on that on Friday and but uh, yesterday it already hit that even slightly overshot the 12,887 uh, and then kind of drifted back down so um, still the index remains above this uh, upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of May um, however uh, of course, as you can see, it has been, uh, has kind of uh, had kind of uh, distanced itself a little bit from that line. So that's why uh, we'll remain very careful and cautious because if we ha have a look at the cash index right now, it's still kind of balancing near this level, near this 12,887. Um, and uh, in a way, for us, uh, if, if this area continues to provide decent resistance, then we may see a small setback here, maybe a small correction back towards this upside line um, because like I said we already had a, did, did have already a, a strong rally 
However, until we get that little correction, uh, we cannot really, um, or until we, let's say, get a nice pop above this 12,887 zone or the 12,973, 74 zone here, approximately around here, marked by the low of the 31st of January, then uh, we cannot really, um, let's say, talk about any upside. I mean, uh, just to be on the safe side, I mean, don't get me wrong, like I said, it, it could travel further north. Uh, however, just to be on the safe side, you wait for that confirmation break because uh, let's like I said it's already um, it has already kind of moved higher and uh, let's say for example Nasdaq is at its uh, all-time all-time highs so in a way uh, let's let's take everything with a pinch of salt guys yes the market is uh, in risk on environment right now it seems like that but from the very short-term perspective a small setback could be possible however uh, we'll consider that idea if the price here on DAX continues to balance below this uh, this little area of resistance between the 12,887 and the 12,974 levels so for now guys keep your eyes on this and even if it travels lower still don't don't get me wrong uh, it's not the end of the world for the for the bulls because they they could still jump in here somewhere near this upside line and push the uh, index higher but the way you could play this one out safe, safer is if you look at the low of yesterday near the um, 12,671 zone, then a drop below this, uh, a drop below this area could in a way confirm that this idea of a potential kind of a short term setback here uh, towards this upside support line. So this is how you could play this one out uh, a little bit on the safer side. So. Um, jumping into the FTSE 100, similar story here. So basically, uh, last week I talked about this idea, this, or should I say, uh, I talked about these Fibonacci levels. Now, um, as you can see, the index continues to drift higher, and uh, it, it seems that it wants to move towards this 61.8% um, this, uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. Yes, overall, we're going to target that area, but... Like I said, uh, we do not exclude maybe a possible maybe setback first and then another push higher. So, um, and uh, of course, we'll keep an eye on this Fibonacci for the on these Fibonacci levels for now. Um, like I said, this 61.8% uh, retracement, uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, kind of is near this 200-day EMA. And to be honest, already the further we move uh, in in the days, uh, the more it seems that it wants to. Well, it's it's coin. The more it coincides with this 200-day EMA, the the 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci. So that's why, uh, guys, be very careful, uh, be very cautious, and uh, yep, keep your eyes on some of these upside lines as well but um, from the short-term perspective you could keep an eye on this one right here this is going to be probably a much better one to watch uh, and uh, if we um if we get a hold up here near this upside line, then yep, another round of buying could be possible. However, if it starts falling back below the 6,231 zone here, then well, I mean, uh, maybe we could see a bit of a uh, a bit of a larger decline here to the downside. However, for now, uh, it is like I said, the the only downside uh, we could aim for right now is a small temporary correction before another leg of buying. Now, gold. Gold is, um, well, it's, I would say, a little bit annoying because um, last week I talked about this level here, the 1694 zone. It drifted lower. It tested, look at this, it tested this 1682. 281 zone uh, which previously acted as a fantastic area of support and you can see it did the same thing right now as well so first of all let's get rid of this 1694 zone it no longer valid so yes in a way it it kind of worked out half I would say because it drifted below the 1694 zone yes it opened the door towards lower levels and it, indeed it fell lower however as you can see it's it found very good support near this 1682 81 zone and uh, from where kind of it reversed back to the upside the the commodity right now is it seems like it is moving trying to move higher however it's getting a hold up near this upside support line that I've mentioned previously uh, and this upside support line is kind of acting as a, as a resistance area right now so uh, this one's taken by the way from the low of the 21st of April so in a way for now how we could look at this right uh, it probably will will take a neutral stand right now because um, a nice good drop a nice good daily close below this 16 well actually let's round it up probably to 16 
1680. A nice drop below the 1680 zone could do the trick for more uh, for more sellers. And uh, yep, we could see this one sliding initially towards the 1645 mark, roughly around here, and then maybe further down. But again, uh, for now, it is where it is. So let, yep, let's be very careful with the upside. We would probably start looking at some higher levels if we get if we would get us a push uh, back above the 1723 zone and then yep uh, we could aim for this key important psychological well not maybe not really psychological but a key very important level here the 1748 zone because as you can see it previously continue to act as a strong area of resistance um, here so basically that's the highest point of April <clears throat> so so yeah, that's uh, that's the more comfortable level for us, of course. After after a break of which we could consider some upside, but like I said, we will start looking at some higher levels if we get a push above the 1723 zone. Uh, quick update on oil here. So yesterday, uh, the black gold uh, drifted higher, and uh, let me actually just uh, probably refresh all this because let me start from scratch. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So basically, yes, uh, the uh, the commodity continued to drift higher, and uh, basically, it um, as you can see, it um, c still is trading above this upside support line uh, taken from the low of the twenty uh, second of April, but. Um, uh, but um, yeah, uh, yesterday the uh, the commodity drifted lower and after it managed to hit. Let me just quickly grab this uh, marker here. So it managed to hit the 43.40 uh, zone, and uh, yep, now as you can see, it's sliding a little bit lower. However, this is all healthy, nice. So the commodity could drift a little bit lower. Could could it could um, test this upside support line if this upside line provides a, a good hold up here for this uh, for this price then yep a nice rebound could be possible but however let's let's have a look at this from the cautious approach a little bit because um, in a way uh, from the short term perspective it, the commodity had already uh, a decent rally and uh, let's not forget that um, let, let me just uh, double check something here guys I think that the we do have the um, right okay so yeah uh, so keep your eyes on this guys because like I said it could be quite interesting and uh, I just wanted to double check something here but uh, no and unfortunately that's not something relevant but uh, from the technical side um, if the subside line breaks and uh, if we see this uh, the price sliding below the uh, the high of the 21st of May here uh, somewhere around here near the 36.96 zone then we will aim for lower levels because at the same time the 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 in uh, the commodity would be placed below it's 21 day EMA here on the daily chart so um, so yeah uh, we'll keep an eye on that one um, and uh, if, if it does fall all the way here below this level then yep lower levels could be met but uh, for now guys if we do see uh, for now like I said we it, we are still a little bit on the positive side we're gonna keep an eye on this upside support line and uh, if it if it does provide good support then we could see a nice rebound and push higher however like I said for those who are more on the cautious side wait for a push above the 30 uh, 43.40 zone which is the yesterday's high and then aim for higher levels because we still have a nice area here near the uh, the 200 day EMA or just before that we do have this low the low the 6th of March uh, near the 45.20 zone so yep keep your eyes on that one a uh, quick update on Bitcoin uh, to be honest not much to talk about here but uh, just a quick uh, like I said refresh of what we talked last week and uh, basically we're still waiting for this one to make a move because um, it, it's becoming a little bit annoying because it's stuck here it's um, it's trading above this upside support line taken from below the 13th of March but at the same time it's stuck below this downside resistance line taken from the highest point of December 2017 and uh, in a way as long as it remains below between these two lines we cannot really do anything and we're waiting for that uh, nice move here um, if we get a break of this short-term upside line and we see a drop below the 9300 level then uh, yep uh, we could uh, aim for lower levels However, if um, if this um, if this downside line breaks and the and the price moves above the ten thousand mark, then yes, uh, yes, higher levels could be met again. But uh, we cannot really do much because until we see those uh, breaks here. So keep your eyes on those. Uh, DXY now very 
quickly on this. Um, so DXY had a decent run to the downside already. So while trading below this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 26th of May. Um, but as you can see, um, basically after it, it, it drifted to this area right here to the to the lowest point of December 2019, um, near the 96.36 level, it kind of reversed higher and pushed uh, to the upside, but failed to stay above this um above this downside line but today we're seeing a bit of positivity here um, maybe we could see a nice push to the upside um, like I said we will remain probably on the cautious side right now because although we are kind of still below this downside line uh, still we will be very very careful here and uh, yep uh, because on one hand we have an index which is slightly overstretched to, to the downside and on the other hand uh, we do have a an index which probably is now uh, kind of trying to violate this uh, its trend line this short short term trend line so that's why uh, in a way what you could do here is um, and let me just grab a few of these area lines so uh, if we have a strong move through this downside line um, then uh, and then keep your eyes on the yesterday's on the yesterday's high because if that uh, area gets violated this could open the door towards uh, towards some higher levels again and uh, we could see this one pushing further uh, north uh, again further north in the short run because uh, don't forget that overall we are still below all of its EMA so which still could be seen as a uh, bearish indication overall uh, but from the short term perspective as a perspective as I said if we do get a break of this downside line and a push above the 97.07 level which is yesterday's high then yes uh, we'll aim for slightly higher levels right here so let me just grab this arrow recycle it and uh, yep uh, maybe we could see like I said a a move towards this 200 day EMA eventually but um, yeah we'll take it from there we'll pick up on this index uh, later on um, but if it starts falling below the lowest point of December 2019 here night below this 96.36 zone then well it could open the door towards further decline so be very careful here um, this is where the idea kind of of the, maybe the dollar strengthening a little bit comes in because I'll show you a few of these pairs um, so uh, NZD USD so NZD of course uh, NZD and uh, uh, the Australian dollar had a, uh, had fantastic rallies recently um, so the market kind of uh, uh, the mar equity markets did help uh, the pair as well so yep and all this risk on environment um, did help the commodity linked currencies like Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar so here in NZD USD you can see that uh, yes overall we're still this, this, the pair still remains above this upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March um, um, it did overcome this barrier I talked about previously, the uh, 0.6523 zone, and his, it got a hold up a little bit higher than that. So um, and it got a, a hold up around here. So uh, it found resistance uh, this morning. It found resistance near the 0.6580. So we'll keep an eye on this level today uh, because if the pair overcomes this barrier, then uh, then yes, we will aim for slightly higher levels. We'll aim for this high of the 16th of January uh, near the 0.6665 level. Could be a nice potential target. However, don't forget that the pair, is, looking at this daily chart, even on the daily chart, the pair is slightly overstretched here maybe. So uh, a bit of a correction here to the downside could be possible before another leg of buying. Now, if... Um, probably if the pair starts falling below this the high of the 9th of March or in other words the highest point of March here near the 0 0.6448 zone then yes maybe a larger correction to the downside could be possible but for now and probably the main idea will be somewhat like this guys so yep uh, keep your eyes on this and like I said if it falls below the, the highest point of March near the 0 0.6448 zone roughly around there then yes we will aim for a 
uh, a larger uh, correction to the downside and let's not forget we might be having something like this here as well so uh, but again for now it's uh, it's not confirmed so just uh, yeah so for now just keep an eye on this uh, USD JPY quick update here so the pair is sliding lower uh, the yen buying has res uh, has started again um, and uh, well I mean for now it's gonna be a very tricky situation here so uh, both pairs uh, both currencies sorry both currencies tend to be considered as a, a safe havens but uh, yeah for now here this is a big battle of the safe havens of say because the reason uh, the dollar has become a safe haven as well and uh, um, now we can see that the the pair USD JPY is drifting lower uh, if we draw a um, an upside support line here let me just quickly uh, grab this line so if we draw an upside support line like this we can see that still the pair is above this uh, tentative upside line taken from the low of the 9th of March um, if of course this gets broken and the pair falls below the 107.32-33 zone, I've mentioned this before, then yes, we will aim for uh, some lower levels. Until then, uh, we'll probably remain a little bit cautious and uh, maybe even somewhat bullish still because, uh, like I said, we let's see how this upside support line will play out. If this one doesn't hold, then maybe the last resort for the bulls could be here near this shorter term one. Uh, but again, both of these lines are tentative, so probably don't focus on them too much. Uh, you can keep an eye on them, but uh, like I said, uh, mainly focus on some, some some support and resistance levels. So yeah, uh, if this if these two get broken and the rate falls below the zero, oh, sorry, 107.33 zone, then yes, we will aim for some lower levels. Um, GBPUSD here. So uh, the pair also had a decent rally. It managed to overcome this key important barrier. Um, so the 1.2650 zone, it, it managed to overcome it. It managed to stay above it. Of course, this kind of still uh, creates a nice positive atmosphere um, here on the GBPUSD. Um, and in a way, the pound could be strengthening right now. Uh, and uh, it could uh, show good results for now and uh, maybe that's why the FTSE is not really uh, that moving that much to the upside uh, together with the rest of the indices uh, the global indices but uh, yep uh, for now like I said of course from the technical side given the fact that the pair is above this 1.2650 zone and continues to trade above it and continues to trade above all of its EMAs here then yes all this kind of creates a nice positive atmosphere however as you can see this barrier here the the lowest point of February uh, is acting as a good resistance level right now near the 1.2773 zone so in a way if we get a nice push further north above it then yes uh, it will continue targeting slightly higher levels we'll keep it short and simple we're not gonna go drastically to the upside we'll go slowly on this because as I said there is a pot potential for the US dollar to strengthen a little bit so we'll keep an eye on that one uh, GBP Aussie now here this this is where it's going to be quite interesting so um, basically the fact that the uh, risk linked uh, commodity sorry commodity linked currencies uh, like the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar it, it are showing a small kind of uh, showing a bit of weakness this morning uh, maybe GB it could play out nicely for GBP Aussie however uh, as I mentioned last week still as long as this downside line remains intact this one's taken from the highest point of April um, as long as it remains intact still the main uh, trend is to the downside but uh, at this situation given that the um, given that the pair has already drifted uh, to the downside quite a bit uh, we'll be very careful here and uh, we'll keep an eye and we'll wait for a drop below the one point a 1.8058 zone uh, which as you can see acted as a fantastic area of support so a drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and yep we could aim for further declines until then uh, we'll be very careful because again like I said we are quite overstretched here so if we do see a break of this downside line uh, then yes we could start looking at some higher levels and uh, basically uh, for now what we're gonna do here let me just probably recycle one of these lines and uh, what we're gonna do here is we'll keep an eye on these highs these uh, recent highs near the 1.8250 zone roughly around there a nice good pop above those 
could yep open the door towards higher levels so 1.8250 could be that little kind of uh, barrier or break of which could open the door to some slightly higher levels we're not going to drag this one too much to the upside we're just going to aim for slightly higher levels uh, euro gbp uh, so this one continues to s uh, move sideways here. So yep, uh, still trading in a range. Uh, not much interesting happening here, but we're still monitoring these two levels. Uh, the 0 0.8864 on the downside and the 0 0.8995 on the upside. So basically uh, not much much has changed from the, my previous analysis. So uh, we're waiting for a clear daily close above, uh, above uh, sorry, either above the 0 0.8995 or below the 0 0.8864 levels. And finally, Euro USD. So um, here everything's kind of working out nicely according to the plan. So yes, we are seeing this uh, little correction to the downside. Um, last week I've mentioned the 1.20 or oh, sorry 1.1237 zone uh, marked by the high of the 16th of March and uh, basically this area here could be uh, still a good area uh, good potential support zone so even though we are seeing a bit of positivity this morning it's not really that great so uh, maybe still we could see a larger correction lower if you want you can draw Fibonacci here as well and um, you can try to maybe see where it could move lower you can see that if we draw it from here from this recent from this reversal here on the 25th of May you can see that the pair did already uh, do the 23.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci um, and it's if it drops below this then yep maybe it could actually even drift further south but um, I mean depends how you're gonna draw this if you want to draw it from here uh, then you can see that the 23.6 percent is perfectly here perfectly on this level the one that I was talking about the 1.1237 and uh, there you, like I said there we we can see could see a hold up and that's why um, you, like I said you could keep an eye on this don't really focus on this too much uh, but yep you might you can, like I said you can have it on your chart just if you if, if you want to and uh, you can see that these levels that I've, I've talked about previously with the, where I've mentioned the downside the 1.1147 kind of perfect coincides with the, the 0 0.38 uh, uh, sorry 38.2% retracement on the on the Fibonacci and uh, that's why a drop below that could yep open the door towards lower levels but again <clears throat> like I said this is optional uh, you can keep that uh, in mind and uh, yep let's see how this is gonna play out but for now of course as long as it stays above the 1.1237 zone there is still a chance for the bulls to, to jump here again and drive this one higher so guys, I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. If you want to catch my uh, video later on, my traders, uh, tea time is always 13.15 GMT time. But for now, I hope you have a fantastic trading day and uh, stay safe, guys, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much and bye-bye.